Hey, uh, from that buy. Here, here, let me get the slate off. There we go. Now we're here. Great. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Layton's Loft, our weekly podcast on the hobby, on the national. Cause <clears throat> echo. You get an echo? So it's running at different times. Oh, oh that was echo. Okay. Great. Sorry about that, Lou. A little echo situation. I think we've uh, taken care of it. Is it still okay? We're good. Okay, good. We are good. So the Celts have a new coach. Yankees lost again last night. Um, and the National, I can tell you firsthand, every passing day, <laughs> something else is going on. Uh-oh. Meaning, oh, it's all good stuff. Oh, excellent. Whether it be it's ads, you know, to sign up for, or you're being propositioned to advertise. <laughs> Um, or someone's begging you, can I put out a few cards at your table? Yes. But then when you have someone, uh, excuse me, 37 different people beg you, you do the math. Like I can't accommodate all, uh, because all the booths are sold out of the show. Yep. This is really eight. Hey, Charles can't wait. This is really cool. Uh, kudos to the team for selecting oh. a vendor. Um, these are little graded card stands, uh, vintage breaks logo. So Lou, it'll go something like this. Oh, that is excellent. Right. So we, oh, just ordered, we just ordered 100 of them, I believe. <laughs> uh, they're not cheap, but they're well-made. Um, and even cooler, 3D model. So, like, if you're a Big Bang Theory fan, yep. I remember that Sheldon had access to a 3D model uh, or 3D printer, and, like, they had to get rid of it because they couldn't afford it. Yep. Um, it was a really good episode. Um, my wife thinks I'm nuts because uh, she's, I guess, watched all the Big Bang Theories. Um and I like, I guess, got derailed, you know, life, work, etc. Uh, so I won't watch any of the new shows until I kind of figure out what's up. And she's like, well, you may never watch it. I said, well, <laughs> if I don't watch them, it's fine. But the early ones were great. Well, it's not a big, deep plot. So you can kind of dive in at the later episodes. If I you want. know. I like to try to do things methodically, though, if possible. It's not the X-Files. It's not like there's That's true. overriding, arching. <laughs> there. That's true. Hey, what's up, Andy? Big Bang Theory. I like Kaylee, so I was, you know, I was watching. Yeah, that's no, a great, Theory. it's a great show. So we're excited, Lou. We're going to be uh, giving out a handful of these uh, at the convention. Very nice. I love those. Yeah, they came out uh, really good. They sent us a sample and such. Um, so uh, we have lots to cover today. Uh, some special guests in the building. Ken asked, I'm sorry, Ken asks if they're going to be for sale or for giveaway. Uh, you know, it's funny. I generally don't get those kinds of things to sell. Um, we generally get them to give away. That being said, if they're well-received, Lou, we may get them to sell in the future. Yep. Um, so what's up, Orlando? What's shaking, Tom? Yeah, hi to everybody who said hi. Tyler and Steven and Orlando and Chris Coe is here. Tom, Andy. Uh, so we got an action-packed show today. Uh, we got um, Chris Gilmore is in the house uh, for the week. Um, and uh, he'll be stopping by, chatting with us for a few minutes on the show. Um, he's helping us get ready for the national as well as uh, take care of some IT stuff uh, at the 459 here. How far away from you is he sitting right now? Oh, I'd say approximately <laughs> two feet. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Ken uh, has recently joined our staff. For now, we'll call him the Pokemon Professor because that's what he is. Okay. Um, but Ken is in charge of social media and marketing uh, for Vintage Breaks, and so he's here also live in the house today, uh, which is kind of cool. It's his first Leighton's Loft. Um, so uh, in breaking news, and no, we're not talking about the Suns game, um, but I literally just pulled off a deal with Chris Coe uh -oh. before game time, right, before our show, and you know, Chris Gilmore was asking me, like, what's going on, man? You, you know, you seem a little like, I'm like, I know I'm trying to pull off this trade, but it's tough. I'm <laughs> like, you know, he's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, Chris Coe. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, just buy the cards. You know, I'm like, no, we're trying to trade. You know, yeah. it's a whole thing. Um, so uh, 
it's going to be um that was a bad that's a battle of the titans you and chris go oh it was it was great though we reached yeah. a deal with a little pressure on us uh which i liked um and so it all it all started with uh when chris co and i were talking offline we were really just like how do you get ready for the national like what's a good way if you will to prepare to cleanse you know what do you bring at first chris wasn't going to bring any cards i'm like chris bring some cards i'm like because you have to understand some people it's not the cash that they want they may covet one of the cards you don't care about right and all of a sudden you have a deal uh so um great that's right if you run into the right guy who wants that particular card you want you get a little premium on it absolutely or to be fair just the ability to pull off a deal that you want to do lou um you know is nice yep so um chris had a few i wouldn't i wouldn't call them extra mantles um, but he had a few mantles that he was willing to depart with. Um, and actually a third one, which we're not going to get into today. It's, it's mind boggling. Uh, we'll talk about that in the near future. Um, but he had a 56 and a 66 mantle, which I'm going to show off in just a minute. And um, he was looking at our eBay account to see if there was basically anything on his list for the national that basically Lou, he could check off now and not have to worry about, which is yep. kind of fun, right? Because yep. at the end of the day, Let's be honest. You're going to the show. You want to meet friends. You want to eat good food. You want to have a good time. But like, you want to walk away with some bounty. Sure. You know, you want to have something cool that you're excited to share with your friends, whether it be your collecting friends, your you know, the the, the folks down the block, whatever the case may be. Um, and so he hit me with a 56 and a 66 mantle. And I'm going to show them off in a minute. And what's great about working with Chris is you generally know they're going to be really good eye appeal. So let me know if you can see. Uh, Actually, that's not that great. Um, yeah, give it a chance to adjust. It'll be okay, okay. I think. Mm -hmm. No, if you can email email that image to me, I'll put them up. Oh, awesome. That's what I'll do, Lou. Uh, message mail. Should have Uncle Lou in here. Great. It's the NBN Sports? Yep. Great. Mantle Nothing picks. but net sports. Yep. Uh, actual size. Great. So, Lou, we will come back to the mantles in a minute. And I will show off what Chris was interested in. Oscar Robinson, yeah. Rookie. What's the grade on that? Two and a half. But it looks really nice for a two and a half. It's got great color. And the reason why I didn't want to part with this in particular is because... Oscar, from time to time, will have a signing, and I figured I'd go out and buy one. Now, I don't have this anymore, so <laughs> I think I have another one that's a little bit lower grade. Um, but, you know, I always like to have, like, an extra 61 Fleur Oscar in case I can get it signed. Yeah. Well, apparently, Chris has the same feeling. And what's interesting, I was saying to Chris Gilmore that Chris Coe had asked me about this card and something else. And I said, well, I don't really want to trade the Oscar, but I'll trade the other card. So what happens when you do that, Lou? Of course they want the card you don't want to trade. Right, exactly. So um, he was interested in the Oscar. And um, what we had to do was figure out, if you will, uh, a price point that he was comfortable with and I was comfortable with, if you will, in trade value. So we were a little off to start with, but then we uh, reached an agreement on that. And then I looked at the way he valued his mantles when I thought it was really fair. And once again, knowing Chris Coe and his eye, uh, I thought that, hey, what's up, Mark? Hope all is well. What's up, Bo? Um, I thought that uh, it would be a good match uh, in terms of getting, you know, a couple of nice, you know, mantles with good eye appeal, uh, whether it be just for inventory, for the national, whatever the case may be. Um, and so there was a little bit of a difference. Um, were you able to get the email, Lou? Yep, working on it. Give me a second here. Oh, yeah, take your time. Um, yep. So... Uh, there was a little bit of a difference and what was kind of fun. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Lou. Um, so if you notice the 66, the thing's dead nuts. Oh, yeah. You know, beautiful card. And so that might actually be a keeper uh, for me when I get it in. And then the 56 mantle, it may not be perfectly centered, but still from like the looks of it, it wouldn't look out of place in an X holder. Uh, and obviously I don't have it in front of me. Um, but I thought they both look really nice, you know, uh, strong for the grade. Um. A little too far there. Look at those are beautiful. Yeah, no, they're they're gorgeous looking examples. And so there was a little bit of a difference um in regards to uh you know the price. 
And so for now, we've agreed that the difference is going to be made up in break credit, which we agreed to. Oh, excellent. But I have a feeling, I know Chris Coe, <laughs> I have a feeling he may text me later and say, you know what, Layton, I don't need the break credit. I like this card that you have on your eBay account. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm excited. Uh, Chris is also shipping another mantle, which we're not going to discuss today, but the community will be very excited to learn about uh, in the near future. Um, and so that was my game time uh, trade that we pulled off just before <laughs> we went live. It was kind of cool. Oh, nice. We should have done it on the air. Should have finished it up on the air. You know, see, Lou, that's why I should talk to you every <laughs> Wednesday morning yeah. or at least, you know, 24 hours before. Hey, what's up, Daniel? Hope all is well. Um, Lou, we'll, we'll get something like that going for the, for the national. But in general, the whole theme was this. Like, if you can take a couple cards out of your PC or your, if you will, group of cards and kind of get things moving. So in Chris's mind, he likes hanging out with Vintage Breaks. So he's got some break credit to stash now and spend, whether it be this evening or in the next couple of weeks, right? Yep. Um, he didn't want the mantles in his collection. He explained to me why at the end of the day, right? You know, we can always extra, use, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, extra, if you will, but just moving in a different direction. Yeah. And, you know, wanted an Oscar. And so, you know, uh, not, of course, the award, but the card. Um, and uh, it was just a good match, uh, you know. Um, and, of course, for Chris, what was nice, he didn't have to lay out any cash. Right. Um, and he's going to get a new card for his collection. He's going to get some break credit. Um, and it may not be the last deal that we do together before the national. And so I'd encourage others also to check out what you have, um, see what's kind of extra for you. Hit me up personally, late and just collect or post it on the Vintage Breaks Buy Sell Trade Group um, on Facebook. There's a lot of folks that are really, um, you know, great to deal with, trade with, you know, buy, buy and sell with. Do you have a feel of whether trading is coming back a little bit in the hobby? It or, definitely or, is. I guess we'll know after the show, right? Know even more. Uh, it, it is, Lou, um, for a number of reasons. But the main reason is, in general, prices have got really steep. Yeah. And so not everyone is always liquid to buy the card that they want to buy. But they may have a card that has gone up also in their collection that they're willing to sell to fund that purchase of the card they're willing to buy. So if you find someone who's actually interested in that card that you were looking to get rid of, well, that's a perfect match. And that's why I was explaining to Chris Coe, bring a half dozen, bring a dozen cards to the national that are graded and slab, because even though you're not going there with the intent to sell them, it may bridge the gap on a deal that you're a little bit far apart on. And the person doesn't want your money. They want inventory. It also bypasses the transaction fees, right? When you oh, oh listen, and there, and going back, it does I was very cognizant of for, for whatever it's worth, Lou, um, not talking with Chris's deal. But when I made a deal of bleaker trading a few weeks back for our strip card of Babe Ruth from 1920, um, I had it tagged at 75 hunch, but that's if you sell it on eBay for that. So the reality of it was our trade value, I believe, was 65 hunch, thinking I lose about 10, 12% um, on that card. And there's no reason to charge them for it as long as it's coming back to me and, and it's fair. Right. Uh, so, you know, once again, that's the second trade I've now worked out and is in many weeks and it's kind of cool. Uh, Brett says, PSA must be caught up. I sent 15 cards in on March 25th. Their economy was told December or January. They're graded and shipped on Monday. That's great. You know, I'm getting uh, lots of um, notification from PSA about orders um, moving along in their system, looking to review them. Uh, and so it means that we're hopefully going to get some more cards back from PSA um, very soon. Um, I did want to mention. Chris uh, says he's looking at your eBay account right now. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thanks again, Chris, for a great deal. Um, so before we talk about this new collection that we just acquired, which we're really excited about, I wanted to mention two uh, bonus promos uh, that we have running right now, Lou. Uh, so our first one is a very cool $10 bonus promo for Vintage Breaks. Um, if you spend $10 on any spots at all from 430 to 730, you're going to have a chance to win one of three prizes, a $1,000 briefcase, a 1956 Topps baseball separate spot, and a $100 break credit. All three of those prizes will be given away at 7.30 p.m. today. You can buy in now until 7.30. If you spend 10 bucks, you get one entry. If you spend 100 bucks, you get 10 entries, so on and so forth. Um, and a really cool uh, twist, Lou, because we've seen that folks, when they're um, watching Layton's Loft, they are also engaged with the Vintage Breaks community with our website. And so we're running a really special $100 bonus that's only available on Layton's Loft from 4.30 to 5.30. And I figured it's already 4.49, so I should probably tell them. <laughs> um, it's on the grid. And what's really cool is anyone who spends 100 bucks on any spots at all from 4.30 to 5.30, 
you're guaranteed to get one 1960 Tops baseball separate set break spot for every hundred bucks you spend. And on top of that, you're going to be entered. And one person who spends a hundred bucks from 4:30 to 5:30 is going to win a free spot in our newly listed. Check this out, Lou. I can't wait to discuss this and show it off. Mm -hmm. 1965 Tops baseball PSA eight. Uh, graded complete set. Every card is graded PSA 8 in the set except for one. The Steve Carl rookie in a PSA 9. It's oh, five grand. Okay. <laughs> so right now, this set break, this 1965 Tops set is available um, on vintagebreaks.com. It is $150 per spot. We haven't had anything as special as, as that, meaning set break wise in a little bit of time since really the 56 uh, PSA graded set. And so we're going to give folks who spend a hundred bucks on any spots at all from four 30 to five 30. Once again, you're guaranteed to get a free 1960 tops separate spot um, with your hundred dollar purchase. And you of course get 10 entries in the $10 um, bonus promo. That's running four 30 to seven 30 and the extra little feather in the cap Lou. We're going to give away one free spot. Oh. In the 65 Tops Baseball PSA 8 separate that we just listed to one person from the 430 to 530 uh, $100 bonus. You could have one of those, that beautiful Mickey Mantle right there. Oh, so I'm going to run through. This is just a couple of the highlights. Um, just because the screen is a little bit different today, Lou, I'm going to show them off like this. Yep. So that's, here we go. There's Carlton in a nine. That's the nine, right? Gorgeous yep. card. Who is that beside Colin? Um, Fritz Ackley. Okay. Pete Rose PSA eight. That's third year PSA eight Rose in a vest uniform. Very nice. Gorgeous Clemente. Sixty five Maze. This is one of the best set breaks that Vintage Breaks has ever had the privilege to offer. So speaking of which, if you folks haven't figured it out yet. We are very big buyers of sets. So if you have any sets, hit me up, Lou, at vintagebreaks.com uh, um, on our website. And you can email Sam at Vintage Breaks directly. Or if you want to deal with me directly, be happy to, Lou, if you could drop my email in there, Layton at JustCollect.com. This is the kind of set uh, that we are actively looking to buy. To be fair, I'll buy low-grade sets, medium-grade sets, high-grade sets. But I'm always buying vintage cards and certainly always buying sets. But right now... That has just been listed at vintagebreaks.com. It's $150 per spot. But if you want a chance to win one free spot, we're giving one away at 5.30 today at the end of the loft. All you have to do is spend 100 bucks on any spots at all. You'll be in the big $10 promo from 4.30 to 7.30 and the extra special promo uh, from Leighton's Loft today. Yeah, thanks, Doug. Doug always puts them up in the comments, too, with the details. So we can put them up on screen and people can uh, refer to them in the comments. That's great. We appreciate it. Excellent. Mike so, Doerr has a national question. He says, with it being so big, should I bother spending time buying commons or should I focus on the rare and bigger priced items? Uh, that's a great question, Mike. I'm going to take the time to address that. Um, what I would say is if you have enough time, do it all. Okay. But if you don't, you absolutely should be focusing on the rare and the bigger price items. And the reason being is because you don't know when you're going to see them again. A lot of folks literally will talk away, myself included, items back into whether it be you call it inventory or collection and i will not make it available for sale again until a subsequent national unless someone maybe contacts me direct saw it there and what have you but that's kind of the allure of the national and so you'd be doing yourself a disservice as a collector as a speculator as an investor walking around and trying to fill up sets where candidly you could do it on ebay or you could do it at any local convention um i would leave i would leave that till the end if you have enough time um and i would definitely focus on the rare and the, the the more desirable items to start. Do you more or less hold them back from uh, until the national because there's more blood in the water at the national and just everyone's excitement level is up? Um, I think for a few reasons, Lou. Uh, you know, one, um, when you put an item online and it doesn't sell, there's, you know, a stigma attached to it. Hey, it's not worth X. It's uh, worth something less than that. And maybe it's not a great card because it hasn't sold. Um, two, because I do happen to have a, a number of expensive cards, Expensive cards generally sell better in person. And so I don't like to make a museum of my eBay account. 
Right. Um, I don't think that there's anything to gain by having expensive cards sit there for six months or a year. And so if I plan to hold it for a while, um, you know, it's not a problem for me to bring it, you know, to an annual event. And to be fair, once again, folks, you know, you can do an incredible amount of sales at the national. You can do an incredible amount of trades. And I'm not just saying with dealers. Uh, you're going to do that with fellow break maniacs from the vintage breaks community. Uh, you're going to be doing that with folks that you may just meet on the floor of the, uh, of the national. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of action going on there. So let me ask you about eBay listings. Cause you brought, brought up something interesting that a, a card can get a stigma if it stays on the market for a long time. Is there a cost to relisting the card? In other words, do people remember from listing the listing or they're just looking at the date that card was put up? Oh, sure. So in terms of listing the card on eBay, there's really not a lot of cost to it. It's more about when it sells, Lou. That's the real cost. Yep. Um, but in general, I, you know, I'm speaking firsthand that when a card is on eBay, if you know, especially if you know what you're doing, just use $1,000 as a price point. Theoretically, if you're selling it in person, it should actually only be worth about $880 or $900 because you know, you're not going to pay eBay in that, in that right. particular case. Um, and Plus, then, of course... People spend that money. They get the card in hand. They're a little bit more confident spending that kind of money. Uh, absolutely. And, and like I said, I think it goes to, you know, people like instant gratification. And so even if you found a card on eBay that you love, um, you know, you won't have it in lieu from anywhere from one to several days. Whereas if you make a deal with me on the floor of the national, after you're done, you can brag to your friends, your loved ones, hide it from your significant other, whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, so Mike is asking, uh, why waste a trip to the nationals for base cards you can get anywhere? Plus people tend to conduct business differently in person than online or phone. So I'm not really sure uh the kind of question you're asking but i'll try to address it the best they can so if you're going to the national i think you're replying to mike i think he was just kind of backing you up on oh uh, okay uh, sorry i was a little bit yeah. confused there for a minute yep. um yeah the national is great uh aside from the business transactions um you know gary v's me on the floor of the national you can tap him on the shoulder and say hey gary can i do a selfie <laughs> like you know you might see michael Irvin on the floor of the national and say hey what's going on you know it, like you don't know what's going to happen there that's not happening at your local convention Yep. So if you're going to be looking through like, you know, dime boxes or looking to complete your 68 set, you know, with commons, you're better off waiting because, you know, when your head's down, you might miss a lot of the action. Um, so, says, sorry, I was driving. To, like, oh, no, we, no problem. Come on. We um, appreciate you participating. And, and uh, so J5, I wanted to show off the, uh, the collection. Uh, and while we're waiting, J5 to uh, uh, come over here. We're going to uh, mention the seven prizes we'll give away today on Layton's Loft, courtesy of Vintage Breaks, uh, Just Collect, and Otia Sports. First place, uh, Dougie will get a $50 break credit. Second place is going to get a pretty cool Bob Feller signed photo authenticated nice. by PSA DNA. Third place will be a 66 Philly football spot. Fourth place will be a 60 Tops baseball spot. And the last three prizes will be a 1971 Tops baseball set break spot. Tyler adds in nothing's more agonizing and stressful than waiting for a big money card to get, get to you through the mail. And that's another factor I hadn't figured on either. Oh, very, uh, very much so, um, you know, uh, in regards to that. Uh, so before we show off this collection, well, I guess we'll show off this collection. So we, we've got it ready to go here. And then we want to do something fun with one of the Jackie cards, right, Chris? Oh, yeah. Great. So, J5, what was the deal with this collection? How they find us? What's the background? Sure. So the collection belongs to a gentleman from Michigan. Okay. Um, he has been the owner of this card since he was a kid. Wow. So he mowed lawns trying to get five cents to buy five cent packs. His parents helped him out as well. Does he remember what he got paid for the lawn? <laughs> That'd be cool. He just died. Him and his friends in the neighborhood, that's what they would do. They would mow lawns, get money, and buy packs for the gum. He was a Tigers fan. Okay. But he did recognize the big players. Okay. So he was between eight to twelve years old when he was collecting. Wow, that's so cool. Well, you're gonna see. So you know the cards are like low to mid grade, but they're they're. I mean, like I'm looking. If they're, K fives around, see if you can get to share your desktop screen here. Oh, can you share my desktop screen so that we can show these cards off a little bit better? Right. Thanks, Lou. And I'll help us out if he's if he's around in handy. Yeah, he's right there. Is he doing stuff? Put the screen on top so there. Not, so now, not yet, not yet, right? Not yet, but in a minute. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll come back for uh, Okay, so these were his personal cards. 
Um, here about the amount that you have and along with those sleeves. It's not that many. Not Does that he have many. more? It's in the box. In the, in the no, I mean, does he have commas? So what did he do with? Like uh, he said, he used the commas and other stuff for bicycle spokes. They call it noise makers. <laughs> that's what he did. He put it in his bicycle spokes. But he yeah. somehow saved these. He knew the stars. So that's pretty cool, Lou. We don't yeah. hear that often, where someone from that time period who was an eight to ten or twelve year old kid was basically smart enough to say, "Hey, I know who Mickey Mantle is. I know who Sandy Koufax is. I'm not going to use those, but I'm going to use the common players." Um, but I have heard that terminology before that, yes, people put them in the bike spokes, but they were basically noisemakers. That's what people yep. call them. You know, it depends on where you were from. But, uh, That's good because it saved him some therapy later. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Lou. <laughs> uh, he found this out on Google. He just Googled how to sell his baseball cards. So as, as J5 is uh, uh, saying, Lou, I don't know if the gang can hear us. Um, so, you know, Just Collect, um, our you know sister company, if you Google, how do I sell my baseball cards? We appear fairly high in a Google organic search. Yep. And so that's how this particular gentleman found us. Yep. Oh, excellent. So that is a mission form. Uh, and of course, you sent out to Mark, who helped us with leads. And he got pictures for us. And he was able to uh, be in contact with the gentleman. And I gave him a call. And then from there, it's just he was very easy to work with. Very professional, very friendly, nice. and. He really appreciated us getting back to him quickly and also making a nice, fair offer. Great. So before I forget, I just want to make sure so that FedEx guy scanned the, the roof, right? Just scanned it. All right, because I, I wasn't watching. <laughs> you know, I get a little crazy. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about Mark in a minute because he's got a big role in this here. Um, so, uh, Lou, things have got so crazy busy at Just Collect that instead of, um, you know, one person handling leads, whether it be myself or it's J5, Right. Uh, you know, we've we staffed up and we so we hired Mark full time to handle uh, leads and, and basically lead flow for us. And so what that means is you can imagine it's kind of, you know, it doesn't matter what it is in life. Right. You can be going to buy a new lawnmower, buy a new home. Nothing yep. happens generally right away. And so people, you know, reach out to us through our, our free submission form um, looking for a free appraisal um, at just collect dot com. And even before COVID, we were busy. COVID things went to a new level. And me, J5, and I knew like we, we, were, we were not going to be able to handle the amount of volume uh, of the leads that were happening. And so um, we're basically thankful that Mark joined our team because he takes a lot of the information. He streamlines it for us, even something as simple as taking the information of the photos and building spreadsheets for us yep. so that we can analyze what the, you know, the folks have, um, value it accordingly, and, and, of course, take it from there. So um, when you uh, were working with Mark on this, did the gentleman send like a handful of images, an image of every card? Like what happens? Uh, he took pictures front and back, like we always do, mm -hmm. of key cards. Great. And key cards, uh, Mark has his own cheat sheet, but every year for every baseball set, we have specific, specific players we look for. You know, Mantle, Clementes, Colfax, Mays, and stuff like that. And the gentleman just had to, you know, happen to have all the cards that you would want to show. That's really cool. And we gave him a nice evaluation. And uh, yeah, we were able to close it here. Great. So I think without further ado, let's show them off. Um, it's really wild, Lou. Like I said, it's it's a high concentration of stars for not a very big collection of cards. Yeah. Lou, you want to switch over? There we go. Great. So get this out of the way. All right. I think I'm going to do them like this. Is that good, Lou? Yes. All right. Without further ado... Love the new look, by the way, too. Yeah, no, this is great. Oh, that the other night, yeah. Gilmore uh, and team have been implementing a number of uh, upgrades and changes. Kofax rookie. Second year guy. Yaz. Yeah. We're going to talk about some of these Jackies in a minute. Jackie, how you doing? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Yep. You don't like Jackie? goes back to Mantle. Oh, God. Another mantle and another mantle. But wait, there <laughs> is another mantle. Another maze, but another mantle. So it's funny because Chris Coe probably looks at like, wait, Layton, you just traded me for a 66 mantle that's dead nut centered. <laughs> Why do you need another one? Because I love baseball cards. That's right. Because there's no such thing as extra mantles. Exactly. 66 mantle. Wait a minute. He's got three. Of course he does. Why not? 
66 rows. I'm saying, like, I wish every 8 to 10 or 12-year-old back then was doing this. Can you imagine? Unbelievable collection for – and, I mean, J5, there's not more than 100 cards, right? Uh, it's like 65. 65 cards. And, of course, these are the highlights, but there's really no commons. So, like, the other cards are, like, Rishi Ashburn or yep. – you know, uh, Spawny. I mean, that's like the worst card in the first stack, but 56 Larson. And there you go, 54 Ashburn. So kind of a cool collection, true childhood collection, and pretty reasonable shape for, uh, you know, someone that was probably handling them pretty heavily back then. All right, Chris, I'm going to try to pick out. You want, Chris, you want to pick out the nicest one? Yeah, pick out the nicest one. All right, well, it's definitely not that one. So it's probably this one. Now, Chris, you want me to say what it would grade? Yeah, what we're going to do, have you pick out a grade. Okay. Then have me pick out a grade. What if it's the same grade? Well, we obviously have to come to some agreement that we won't pick the same grade. All right, well, I'm going to pick the right grade then. So do we bring Chris in at this point? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please. Right. We're going to bring Chris in. Whoa. Yeah, he's right there. <laughs> he's right there. That's right. So um, this is Chris's idea. He wants me to pick one of the Jackie Robinsons that we just acquired from the collection and um, basically pick out what I think it would grade. Uh, so this 56 Tops Jackie, I think, is the best of the four, although one of the other ones may grade the same as this. Uh, this looks, looks to me to be the sharpest. And based on what I can tell, I'm now, to be clear here, I'm not under the lights, but um, it looks like a four to me. And the main reason why it looks like a four, it does have a little bit of corner wear, um, a little bit of accelerated rounding, and then I think in the lower, it was the lower um, lower left right here, um, there's like a little bit of a corner crease. And so that tends to be, um, you know, a card that would grade more of a four than a five. Uh, so I think this card is going to grade a PSA four or an SGC four. So you're saying a four. That, 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 that's your call. Huh? I took a look at that card earlier. Huh? I think it's a three. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. So, so we'll put up a high risk scan on the Facebook group, and we'll vote. Yeah, and we'll let we'll let people vote. We'll and what happens vote. when you're wrong? Well, if you're right, the people that voted for you will get a ten dollar break credit. Oh, that's pretty if cool. I'm right. Mm -hmm. The people that voted for me will all will get a ten dollar. I was gonna say you should get barbecue. Well, I mean that's a lot of barbecue to cook, but they'll get it's a lot of break credit to give out. If I'm right. <laughs> well, I mean you should have to sacrifice, right? Yeah. Well, I mean. Take it on my paycheck. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all good. But um, anyway, we're real proud to acquire this collection. Look for the Beautiful. story coming soon from Monty and gang at our blog at blog.justcollect.com. Gorgeous. Chris, Maybe we'll even give away one of the of Echo down ones. there. I'm sorry. I'm asking Chris. Chris, are you muted because of Echo down there? Yeah, I'm muted because of Echo. All right. All right yeah. Um, all right, very I'm, cool. I'm close enough to Layton's mic. That yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Great. So we're going to talk to Gilmore in just a minute um, about a couple things. Uh, but before we do, um, I wanted to uh, – maybe we'll do a poll, I guess, um, not during the show, uh, Lou, but afterwards on social media. Um, but we're down to either a Friday or the Friday of the National or the Saturday of the National – um, that we're going to be doing a Vintage Breaks uh, party. And what we'd like to do is to pick a date, uh, meaning the Saturday or the Friday, um, as well as um, to try to start getting people to RSVP for it so we can understand how many people are going to be coming so we can figure out the right facility to hold it in. Uh, so just let me know in the chat what you're thinking. If you're going to be at the National, um, if you have a preference on hanging out on Friday night or Saturday night, please let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Dude, just like mantle cards, you can have a, never have enough Gilmore. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. All right, Gilmore. So um, you've been up here now a few days. Tell me, you know, the, the two or three things you've seen that you're envious of uh, for vintage breaks that you wish you had down in the South. And then maybe one or two things you're like, wow, I'm glad I'm able to break by myself down there because – for example, you know, 
I like to eat really smelly Brussels sprouts. Huh. And maybe not everyone would really like those. You know, I don't know. Well, like, the thing I'm envious of is just the sheer amount of 2019 and 2018 premium products. That shelf over there has Vlad rookies just <laughs> falling out of it. Yeah. And uh, I wish I had it. Yeah. Know? Well, we can you know, work something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have my people talk to your people. Well, I mean, that's why I bought, brought a big suitcase, you know. It was originally to try to smuggle Dougie back down south. But, but you decide you know, it's not going to fit. No, it's not going to fit, but, but Vlad cards will. Yeah, I think they will. <laughs> With me being the modern breaker, that's like, uh, that's that's gold to me. And that 2016 vending box is, oh, man, that's a great product Okay, so your first, your first, uh, sorry, I had to uh, uh, take care of something on my phone. Um, so your first thing that you're voting for is product. Oh yeah, that's the main thing you're jealous of. This, this is a, this is a uh, a mecca of sealed product here. You know, there is a lot of sealed product here. Yeah, there right? is. I can confirm. <laughs> yeah, like uh, if, if 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 it all went to the apocalypse. And we got overrun by zombies tomorrow, and all collectibles are terribly worthless. We can have a lot of fun in here. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, get a bunch of Sixers. Yeah. yeah. I think we'd have a good old time. Get yeah. some barbecue going. Oh, yeah. So um, what's one other thing that uh, you see up here, Chris, that uh, you wish that you had in the South? Oh, the Severics, definitely. Uh, that's Steve Carlton 9. Yeah. Just, just, just hits you. It pops out of the car. The car pops out of the case. It's just uh, so, like, to, to basically to have it down there to show off, to talk about, to maybe yeah, even yeah, do yeah. the set breaks. To, to run the set breaks. Set, set breaks are a huge part of our business. They are. And because of the nature of logistics, South doesn't get any of those. Nope. So, like, <laughs> and that that's probably not going to change. That's why I didn't mention it. So this like, is very interesting. By the way, Lou, I really did put him on the spot. I'm learning some great stuff. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I'm learning to lock up everything after this meeting's over. <laughs> you better. Yeah, take inventory. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Figure out all the blind spots in the camera here. You know. Just yeah. <laughs> now, um, let's switch gears for, here for a minute and tell me um, one thing that you're happy uh, that you're able to break. You know, with a smaller, um, you know, smaller uh, situation down there. Well, I mean, the advantage we have in the south is speed. Like, uh, product comes out, we can have it on release day, and because there's not 300 SKUs in the South, we can focus on 2020 UEFA Top Chrome. Sure. We can really put a laser focus on what's happening right now in the hobby, which is something the North obviously doesn't do because of the, uh, the wide approach. Sure. I like the wide approach, but it's just good to switch gears every now and then. This chair is really well broken in. Thank you. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up, Dom? How are you? Uh, so speaking of Dom, Dom and I just did a deal earlier today. We made a trade. He had some extra cards. was looking for some break credit. Um, and uh, easy peasy. So once again, folks, I'll drop my uh, email in here. But if you ever uh, are looking to clean up your collection a little bit, get rid of some extras, I'll certainly let you know if it's up or alley or not. Um, you know, we buy for cash, uh, break credit, wampum. Um, you know, we trade for cards, grape, Swedish fish, uh, all, right. all sorts of different things. Mike has a suggestion, and we got to get our second show going, Leighton, because I want to do a second show. But uh, he says you should do a sports card show similar to Pawn Stars or Antique Road Show. We've done a couple of these episodes on the loft where people have joined the show and shown what they have and, you know, talk about maybe a trade or a purchase. Oh, I agree. I, I um, I mean, we're hoping with, uh, you know, your efforts and now Ken's efforts being on the ground here, we're going to be able to start trading card therapy before the national and have at least a few episodes, uh, you know, happen. Um, oh, it got I, a name, huh? Trading card therapy. I, like I think it. that's what we, I think that's what we voted on. You yeah, know, we, we, therapy? Uh, excuse me, cardboard therapy, trading card therapy. Yeah. 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 Like that? yeah. Uh, well, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, cardboard therapy is cool. But the thing is, is that for people who are not in the know, like uh, you actually may not know what that is. Yeah. Trading card therapy, unless you know you don't understand what the trading card is, mm -hmm. is a little bit more clear. Yeah. And to be honest, it'd be really funny if you started a podcast, Ken, called Cardboard Therapy, and you literally had people out there who have like I'm I'm sure you can Google it right now. Like there's all sorts of fetishes in the world and phobias. Beautiful like, oh my god, that cardboard <laughs> really gets me crazy. You know, like you know, who knows? 
Well, there yeah. are people who really like the sound of scissors going through construction paper. So maybe it's something weird like And is that, that someone, you know, rhyme with Fillmore? No, it's not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> I remember Hardcore Pawn, Jeff. Wasn't there like actively uh, active fights on that show every week? Oh, were there? I, I think there were. That show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can have that. We, we can stay some things in here. You know, we were talking about our Avenged Breaks Rumble in there, you know. <laughs> the National is going to be a hoot, man, with every everyone under the same roof. Well, that's what we do. We got to get Gilmore and you on that show. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You can fight over the evaluation of the cards the guys are offering. I'll be Tom Lee. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Chris, so let's switch gears for a minute. Uh, like I said, we're thrilled that you're up here for the week helping us out, You know, breaking, um, upgrading, IT equipment, all sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Monty? Um, so in regards to you know the market itself, uh, you know, it's been talked about at length uh, on social media and, and you know, wherever you, you consume your card content. You know, the market has softened uh, on modern, uh, probably even more so than it has on vintage. Um, you know, people are asking, uh, if you will, you know, how is it going to affect the national or, you know, uh, basically, like, does that change your plans for the national? Because things are down versus where they were six months ago or nine months ago. Um, and so... I'm curious because I know that you know you work for us full time, but you dabble actively in cards. Certainly, oh, wow. I dabble actively in cards yeah. uh, professionally for Just Collect. Um, so I'm curious for yourself because I know when you go to the national, you know you'll often target maybe in years past ungraded, right? Because you'll grade it, get your margin, sit on the rookies you like, flip whatever. Um, I'm curious, have you thought about because the whole grading you know, game, if you will, has changed, or at least temporarily has changed. Has it changed your mindset on how you're going to the national looking at cards? Uh, it's made me feel safer. The correction has. The correction is actually a good thing for me as a buyer because it's a buyer's market right now. If you, like, I don't think the term crash is accurate for what, what actually went down. Because if you zoom out to, like, February, cards are still way up. Nearly everything is still way up from February. Now, it's not way up from, like, two months ago, especially if you look at a car like the Prism Luka Donkey. It's way down. You can get one of those for, like, seven, dollars $800 on a PSA 10 right now, whereas you couldn't dream about that previously. Sure. So, as a buyer, it's the, the, the correction, I guess we would call it, because there were some things that were just over overpriced, overvalued, makes me feel safer picking those up for the long term. And when you add on that the fact that PSA has had had their issues and basically is not available to cheap cards, you're going to be able to buy better condition raw cards right right now. Really, it's the best time to be buying raw cards. Well, you know what does Warren Bo what does Warren Buffett say when everyone you know is fearful then be greedy and when everyone's greedy you know be fearful. Exactly. So, uh, you know what I'm seeing and, and I agree with uh, your sentiment, Chris. So in regards to graded. Even though I have a ton of inventory, um, you know, more than candidly that I would like, uh, uh, and of course I want it to go up, right? And I want yeah. it to be worth more every day, right? Just like a stock, mm -hmm. you know, or, or your portfolio. Um, the reality of it is, Lou, even though I have those assets, yeah. I actually, you know, if you will, I'm a day trader of those assets also, meaning because I buy and sell actively. And so what I would tell you is, um, I agree with Chris wholeheartedly in regards to I wanted the market to normalize, even if it meant giving back of some of my on paper gains for my portfolio. Um, and the reason being is because I like to actively buy and it's much harder to buy. Yeah. When things are trending up so much mm -hmm. that you, based on your experience, know that at some point they have to pull back or at least flatten out. And so when they start to flatten out and you can see some sort of consistency with prices that you can wrap your head around, Lou, then you can feel a little more comfortable about deploying, you know, a serious amount of, you know, money into your inventory. Well, some of that helium coming out of the market just can, it just uh, becomes a sale, right? Because the market trend in general over the long term is going to be up. So you get a little extra, you know, get a little extra discount on that price now with that correction. I think that's a great word for it. And that adds to your profits going forward. 
Uh, very much so. And then in regards to raw, you know, or ungraded, depending on how you, you know, talk about cards that are not graded, um, there is no doubt that right now, for example, and I've known this from dealers. I, I know dealers who flipped out inventory because they know that the next time they'll be able to grade bulk of PSA will be between six months and two years. And I'm not saying about when they'll get it back, meaning when the actual bulk, cheap, you know, way of grading is available or the cheapest, excuse me. And so if you're willing to stockpile cards, you absolutely can do so at a substantial discount right now. But understand that plan you have may never come to fruition because PSA literally may never offer bulk grading, uh, you know, in the near future. Uh, for a reasonable price. In that regard, Mike asked, do you guys think the price of grading went up, which means the prices of cards go up more? Do you think people would, or will people just buy raw? No, people will still buy graded. It's like buying raw cards on eBay is a miserable process. Mm. You never know what you're going to get. So that, that, that's why grading exists. Does the, market, does the market put a premium on the rising of prices by PSA? In other words, will the card value go up more than the rise in grading prices? I think there's some correlation there. there there's some causation there, but I don't think I don't think it's going to be too drastic um, increase in sub fees. Like, uh, people are still going to submit. People are still going to buy graded cards. Um, with it being more difficult than ever to get cards graded, yes, you will see some price spike. But I don't think it's going to be extreme. Uh, friendly reminder, we've got about 10 minutes left in our $100 promo that ends at 530. You'll also be in our $10 bonus promo that ends at 730. We're giving away a bunch of good stuff, including a $1,000 uh, briefcase, 56 set spot, $100 break credit. And, of course, if you get into the 430 to 530 $100 early bird loft promo, you will have a chance to win a free spot in our newly listed epic 1965 tops PSA eight and higher baseball set break. Love that Mickey Mantle. That oh yeah, it's one of my favorite 65. Yep. That Carlton's one of the nicest cards I've ever seen. Yeah, that no, was a great card. Um, so Chris, uh, one of the last questions I wanted to ask you on the loft today, uh, and we've already kind of covered it a little bit in regards to the national. Um, but you know, I, I know that you're a veteran of the national, certainly a veteran of the hobby. Uh, I've talked about some of my tips on here. Um, I was curious if you can think of a tip or two that you'd like to share for either this year, uh, this year's national in particular, because of everything going on in the world, or just you know more of a macro tip, like hey, this is good for every national. Um, you know, this is what you what you think you know you'd recommend. Uh, get in early, everything. Get in as soon as you can. Find a buddy, sneak in. Dress up like a potted plant and like wa walk your way in when the security guard's looking, you shrink down, and you're just a potted plant. No, get, get in early, however, you can. Uh, well, put a oh vintage brakes t shirt on and say you work for vintage brakes. Right? You, you know, Lou, I gotta tell you, that might be the best, simplest idea yeah. I just heard all day. Yeah, you yeah, simply yeah, put yeah. on a VB t shirt and say, not, I work yeah. for VB. Yeah, they got the two boosts in the case break pavilion. You know, I, I'll be there, guys, no problem. Find a dealer who needs help setting up. Say, hey, I will carry all your stuff. So it's a really, early. all kidding aside, Chris, some of your yeah. suggestions about how to get in, or to be fair, getting in early, if you're one of those like me, like Chris, right? You're a mm -hmm. you're a card show, you know, connoisseur. You love the card shows. Um, you get excited by them. There's nothing worse than getting to the show like four hours later after it starts and like I get three texts plus my buddy Joe's in the corner. Wait, come here. I'm like, think he's got a granola bar for me or something. You know, he's like, no, dude, did you see what I bought? I'm like, when did you buy that? Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, it's the first hour. I'm like, oh, the, fuck? The, the best deals are always first. I don't even know like, it's the best deals. I wouldn't agree with that. I think that the best stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is there, you know, and maybe some of it's a good deal. Maybe some of it isn't. Uh -huh. But absolutely, if you want the pick of the litter. And you want to be able to buy the best of the best. You got to remember, man, we're not the only people going to the show. Well, and it's not just that. If you don't have a big budget, still get there early. Of course. Because the dollar bins are loaded. That's a great suggestion, Lou, the and a great bins. point. So 
this is not just for like the swanky swank who got big budgets, right? Crisco, yeah. who's going to pay 35% more than he needs to for a 52 maze because yeah, well. he doesn't care. He's at the show. You know, he's told me so. Um, get it. Why not? But, but all kidding aside, Lou uh, and gang, Chris, it's a really great point. You can go to the show, be on a small budget, dive into the quarter to a dollar boxes, but if they're fresh, yeah. oh, very cool, Stephanie. Um, if Love they're it. fresh, Lou, remember what I talked about. A lot of people are bringing inventory to the national that they haven't brought anywhere else. It includes people with the dollar boxes, yep. uh, the quarter boxes. There's now understand it's all relative, but you know if you're the first to go through someone's really good dollar boxes. You might be pulling cards out of there that you could sell for five to twenty bucks. I've got actual numbers for you. Oh, okay. So 2019, you remember I was running around combing these dollar bins. Yeah. So I spent three thousand two hundred and forty dollars okay. in dollar bins. Okay. Spent a lot of cards. After mm -hmm. eBay fees, my total rake was eleven thousand dollars. Wow. Did you get every card graded or no? Some of the cards graded. A very few cards graded. Oh, okay. Most of it was just cool inserts. Oh, you money. literally sold it as is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Well, Can I give you thirty two fifty this year? And you just do that for me? I'll split it. I mean, if you if you were willing to sacrifice the time of me and no, food. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you know, 2019, that was part time. Yeah, you know, no, I remember. Sometimes it's a little different. Part time as a potted plant. Yes. Trying to move <laughs> into the rotation full time and taking himself out of the potted plants. Yeah. Which, as you can see, I, he's not in the pocket. The year before, that tactic I just gave you of finding a dealer, 2018, I called my buddy Brian Gray at Leap and said, hey, Brian, I'm at the door. Uh, can you come get me? He says, yeah, if you'll bring his stuff in with you. <laughs> so That's so a good I'll point. You know, a lot in. of folks need help setting up. <laughs> Ask your fellow card shop owner or local dealer if they need help. Set so up at the National. What we need to do is get Dougie to dress up like Hulk and say he's in there for signing, and Chris could be right. his bodyguard. Dude, and that's awesome. Good. Everybody's in. I like that. I um, just want to bring up Dom an interesting idea. You should start a service where someone gives you X amount of money and you invest it for them. So the thing is, in the, in the, in the industry, the hobby, um, you know, there are a few funds that are out there right now. I don't know the exact, you know, buying and such. But one of the things we talked about doing here at Vintage Breaks was basically, um, you know, doing something similar uh, that Dom is suggesting and that some of these funds are doing but doing so where it's a lot of our community members are in on it. And so it's something that I'd like to talk about uh, at the national with some of the folks who are part of our community, of course, our team members as well. Um, but you know, that's, what's great about the show. We get to talk about all this kind of stuff. Yeah, we should do a fractional. It's a great idea, huh? Yeah. Oh, there we go. So Brian just asked if we guys, if we need help. Yeah. What I need help is, is buying vintage cards at great prices. <laughs> that's what I need. And, and I help. Yeah. And finding all the people in the Chicago surrounding area that have collections they'd like to sell. Well, Gus has got a Stanley Cup picture. I like that. That's cool. Yep. But Bri, if you're interested, uh, hit up Gilmore. You guys can chat. And he'll he'll let me know what's up. Um, can't wait to see you, Charles. It's gonna be a great show, folks. You got about five minutes left in that hundred dollar promo that ends uh, at the end of the loft um, at five thirty. You will have a chance to win a free nineteen sixty five tops. Baseball separate spot. Every single card is graded by PSA 8 or higher. The single example being higher than 8 is the Steve Colt rookie in a PSA 9. Chris, have you got a target for the National? Anything in particular you'd like to fall into when you get there? Um, well, I did, but Wander Franco got called up. So <laughs> maybe Bob, uh, something nice, Bobby Witt or... Um, um, Julio Rodriguez. Yeah, Bobby Witt's going to take over as the number one overall prospect in baseball, and Julio Rodriguez is not, not far behind. Yep. Lou, I'm putting in the chat Saturday or Sunday for the VB party at the National. Wanted to get some feedback from people. Saturday or Sunday. That's what I meant. So. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, because on Sunday we will not be partying. Well, we will, but by giving away a lot of stuff. Yeah. Speaking of which, if you'd like to check out our new event page for our big national bonuses and promo, you can check it out. I believe it is now live at event.vintagebreaks.com. I'll just make sure. Well, can you bring that up for us? Yep. It's already up. Oh, great. Friday or Saturday for the VB party at the national.
They did a good job, J5. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. I don't know if he's issued anywhere, but you guys, Brennan Davis of the Cubs. That's the guy. That's the guy you want to stop packing away. I've got a lot of Brennan Davis. Really? <laughs> See, Lou, I like to hear that from the source. Yeah. I know you're not a card guy, but I know you know your baseball. I've got he's toolsy as hell. He's really raw, but this time next year, everyone's going to be on Brennan Davis, I think. How about a dozen Sapphire autos of Brennan Davis right now? Oh, wow. Nice. What, uh, what position does he play, Lou? Center fielder, but he won't stick in center field. He'll end up corner outfielder, but. Okay. He's put a lot of muscle in this past year, so, yeah. Yes, he has. He was a tall, skinny kid, but he's put on a lot of muscle since he's become a pro, yep. His rookie card, he looks like, he literally looks like he's got Steve Urkel's body. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Urkel's swing early on when he was that thin. Hey, do we have that Trouty? Can I show that off from last night? Yeah, awesome. that, that was a great card. Sweetness. Tyler says he'll watch this live show for hours. Well, you you <laughs> well I, I appreciate it, Tyler. Thank you. Wow. I mean, this is just sick. I'm not going to take it out of the holder. Uh, you want to switch? Yep. Uh, let's see. Switch it over. There you go. Check this out. One of one protectors at the plate. So what do you think this was? His elbow guard? Uh, it's, yeah, it's his elbow guard. One of one from Tops Definitive, which is a super high end product. Look at that. Gorgeous. Smack that dab on the label. In the same box from that same subset, but autographed, is a redemption card for a Mike Piazza just like it. Super cool. Yeah, that's a hot box. Now, yeah. um, thank you, Kristen. Um, I wanted to uh, tease next week's episode of The Loft. Really excited to announce that our really good friend, Andy Brentano, now I'm probably going to mess this up, from Oregon, has helped us buy a substantial five-figure collection Ooh. from his home state, which we've now received in our office. We've paid for in full. The check has been cashed. Oh, and Andy spent his break credit. Um, you know, little, how you doing? Thank you uh, <laughs> already. But we might have Andy on if he's up for it to talk about the process how it worked, um, and what was really interesting, Andy told me the other day, he said, Leighton, I didn't tell you this, but late in the deal, when you had basically been told that they agreed, the gentleman or the family, I think it might have been the gentleman, basically got, like, you know, and I, I said this to him um, when we chatted on the phone, I've had grown men cry on the floor of their kitchen after shaking my hand and I've given them money because they don't want to give the stuff. Yeah, I can so, imagine. So, he apparently was having a little bit of seller's remorse or changing his mind. And Andy said he never told, he never told me that, but he, I guess Andy said to the gentleman that Andy almost lost his mind because Andy had been helping this guy a lot in the family. Yeah. And needless to say, you know, time, you know, isn't free. Uh, and I guess was like, Hey man, you know, if you don't want to do this deal, no problem. Like I'm done after this, but we'll let Andy talk about it all in his, in his own words. Uh, hopefully next week on the loft, you can join us, Andy. Sounds like a great story. I love it. Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, there was an incredible amount of stuff, unopened cases, boxes, a Jordan rookie. I mean, wild, wild. A little down the road, I'm look, working on Michael K for you. Oh, that would be huge. Yeah. Hey, I'm I can I can get, uh, if you know, I don't know if it's good or bad. You have to let me know, but I can get Pete Rosenberg to, uh, to, to help because uh, I hooked him up with some wrestling cards. At the same time, I also heard Rosenberg give us a shout out on Michael K's show. Oh, nice! And 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 like basically, I don't know if K loved that he was giving free shout outs. So you know, <laughs> we're gonna let you take the take well, the reins, Lou, until you need us. I'm working through his. He's got a book out now. So oh, he does. I saw that Bobby Mitchum, who yeah. was a former terrible Yankee in the '80s. I mean, just gross. <laughs> And obviously, you know, Bobby he, beat him. he wasn't great, but he wasn't terrible, was he? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, he was Lou. I watched every Yankee game as a kid. He yeah. was horrendous. And by my horrendous, and I don't have his stats in front of me, these are his stats, Dougie 235, six home runs, 31 RBIs, four stolen bases with 18 errors. And you're talking about an OBA that didn't break 300. So you're telling me that that's not gross? <laughs> okay. 
and they would never go to the playoffs. That's why they didn't care about replacing Bobby Meacham because they weren't going to make the playoffs anyway. The only person worse than Bobby Meacham was Wayne Tollison. Wayne Tollison was oh, really he, gross. He was bad. Really bad. I have a Tolly game used bat. I have no idea why. <laughs> but I do. I can't even spell Bobby Meacham. How do you spell Bobby's last name? M-E-A-C-H-E-M. Yeah. That's what I thought. So he tagged Michael K on social media trying to get a signed book. He had eight career homers. Wait a minute. Say that again? He had eight career homers. Thank you, Lou. You just confirmed. Bobby Meacham is one of the grossest Yankees from the 1980s. <laughs> Doug, I was apparently exaggerating. He didn't have six home runs in a season. He had eight home runs, folks, for his career. No, he had five five in a season. He had five, five in 87. And the thing is, guys, if he was a journeyman, I wouldn't really care. He was the starting second base or shortstop for the Yankees. Well, I mean, he was a starter in 85. 84, he played 99 games. But 86, he played 56. He was very bad, Chris. 87, 77. If you want me to pay for your dinner, you have to say he was very bad. He's got a career OPS of 621, so yes, very bad. Great. Thank you. That's all I'm looking for. He hit 218 and 481 at bats. So. Wait, yeah. say again, Luke? In 85, he hit 218 in 481 at bats with one homer, but he stole 25 bases. Oh. That's oh. just brutal. In a season where they gave him 20, where they gave him a full season, he made 24 errors at shortstop. I know. That's what I'm saying. He's horrible. <laughs> horrible. Oh, my. I just scream at the, scream at the TV. My father would be yelling, you're going to break it. I'm like, God, they got to get rid of me. <laughs> Terrible. Funny, that's how I feel about Jackie Bradley Jr. It's exactly the same way. So don't forget, folks, um, vote on the Jackie Robinson, what you think it's going to grade. And um, please let us know if you think that uh, Saturday or um, Friday is best off for the Vintage Breaks party. Uh, if you're going to be at the National, please let us know. Monty says, meet him Kevin Moss. I would definitely keep Kevin Moss because Kevin Moss gave the Yankees what Jeremy Lin gave the Knicks. This very brief period oh, of time. Gee, there's of a leap that I never would have seen coming right there. Of absolute elation, right? <laughs> oh, Ed Whitson was disgusting. Listen, <laughs> all you got to do is talk about that era of the Yankees yep. and just say that they threw a no-hitter and Andy Hawkins lost the game. <laughs> and that's it. You don't really have to talk about much more. So from uh, Leighton's Loft, from myself, from Mr. Gilmore, or Fillmore, or whatever we're going to call you moving forward. <laughs> no, um, no Fillmore, by the way, is a fantastic music venue, which I'm yep. sure Lou knows a lot more about than my, even myself. Um, anyway, Lou, uh, thanks again for joining us. A it was a really fun always. show today. Yeah. Um, and we're going to give away the seven prizes uh, to start the next hour. Of course, you can tune in with Dougie Fresh, J5, and Sam from 5.30 to 9.30 tonight. We did forget to talk a little bit more about Mark um, and uh, how this was his first deal that he brought in. Um, but we'll talk more about it next week and um, also how he had no choice but to get the deal because he brought he bought an extremely offensively expensive uh, steak <laughs> for our first company dinner. And um, the way he ordered it and talked about it was, it was hysterical. So I can't wait to tell the story. <laughs> Also, remember to tune in. Hopefully, we'll have Andy uh, next week on the show to talk about, about the big collection from Oregon. I've been oh, trying very hard to say it correctly. Looking forward to that, yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and we'll start showing off some of the stuff as well. And I'll leave you with this. I don't know that I'll be collecting them, but I've been digging these because I know I'm not going to open them. There's only one card in the gum. But visually, they're very appealing. Ooh. Tops Penny Packs from the 50s and 60s. This is a 1959. That doesn't look 50s. That looks much later. 1959, Lou. Just the graphics and stuff. They look like a few years later. Yeah, I think I, I dig it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Layton's Loft. You can find us each and every Wednesday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Please like, subscribe, so that you are notified each and every time we are going live. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.